Peggy 18. Alan Wake 2 is a psychological survival horror game, and the player takes on the role of two different hero characters. The title of character, Alan Wake. The story is a monster. And a new character, Saga Anderson. Glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. Alan Wake 2 has many tools in it. <gasps> two narratives. We are exploring two worlds. It's not just Alan Wake this time. We have this theme of duality and echoes in Alan Wake 2, so we needed a counterpoint, like another perspective in the game that was a playoff of Alan's, as well as having a character located in the Pacific Northwest so we could have both of those worlds present in the game and playable for the players. Even when we are not playing him, there are a lot of things that tie the story to him, and there are other ways how he is present in those moments as well. The character of Saga, she's an FBI agent and relative newcomer to the Bright Falls area. She is a really capable investigator. She is a mom. She's a teller of bad puns. What's not to love? She's enthusiastic about her job. She really enjoys what she does. But I think her most defining quality for me is her kindness. She's a very empathetic person, and she brings that into her work, and it makes her a better detective and profiler. It's two different professions that are similar but different. The artist is looking for inspiration, the detective's looking for answers. You can see the parallel there, but there's different approaches to those things. We're obviously quite aware that the first game came out 13 years ago. So we wanted to make sure that we had a hero character who would bring the perspective of new players. We wanted to make sure that new players into the experience would be learning with her through the story. We wanted to make absolutely sure that we find the right actor for the role. And we were looking for quite a while for Saga. Hi, I'm Melanie Liebird, and I'm playing Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2. This is my first time working in this medium and doing a game. It's just nice to learn something new. The voiceover part of it can be very intense when you get in the booth, but I've learned so much. All of us have been working with Melanie, and because of the writing process being ongoing, there are always new ideas and writing it more and more specifically to her as a role. I'm excited for the world to see Saga because I think she's a brilliant role model. And just to see a woman in this role, a woman of colour being a protagonist in a game that we don't see that often, and just to have a lifestyle that she has, doing her best to balance work and a family, and I just think that's really relatable for a lot of people. While you know, we wanted to create one cohesive experience, we wanted to give each kind of playable character in their world its own style and mood. Something's not right! In a setup for Saga's experience, she's investigating these ritualistic serial killings. When we were looking at, like, from a narrative and tone perspective, looking at things like True Detective, we actually have a lot of, like, 90s references in terms of, like, things like Seven. The events that bring her to the Pacific Northwest are a series of murders, and they think there might be a serial killer somewhere lurking in the area. Part of this experience taking place in Pacific Northwest is centered around our fictional small town of Bright Falls. This idyllic, slightly quirky small town that clearly then under the surface has shadows and darker things waiting and a, and a mystery waiting. In the first game, you didn't really get to explore the environments, but now you will be able to walk around the streets, discover the town a bit more, and revisit existing locations, like the diner, for example. Quite a lot of research was done uh, to prepare for this project. I spent several weeks reading research papers, gathering data on forest surveys, learning about key species of the area to properly do justice to the Pacific Northwest. The photogrammetry side of it uh, means that we can actually scan trees on site ourselves. The trees that we're seeing in the game are literally the trees that are from this area in the Pacific Northwest. The player will be going back to Cauldron Lake, which is obviously a key part of the story, be exploring all the forests that are around there. And because we kind of are more slightly open area based, so the player can freely explore, the player can kind of go back and revisit locations as part of their playthrough. Saga Anderson, she's not just any FBI agent coming into this case. There are elements to this that, that very much tie to kind of who she really is and, and a journey, a, a mystery to be discovered there as well. First things first, what's your name? So 
So where has Alan Wake been these 13 years? He went missing at the end of the first game. That is the question. We knew from the beginning that, that when Wake ends up in the dark place, uh, getting out from there is going to be a long hellish journey uh, and a hard struggle. And I guess that, that where we are now is fiction becoming reality. I was playing a lot of fantasy games before I really had ever heard about Alan Wake and a friend recommended it. And it had a big impression on me just because of how complex the characters were. Seeing a game that rivaled other mediums with its complexity of character was really inspiring to me. Hello? The game that sort of nailed Remedy on their storytelling. I was mostly impressed by the atmosphere and the, the lighting and especially the, I think, the use of music. It was unlike anything I'd ever played and it felt like I was transported into this playable Stephen King novel with this weird story taking me for a crazy ride. It was first of all proving that we can do bigger games in Finland. There's this Finnish flavor in it that you, you cannot really put your finger on it, and I like it dearly. We are kind of like cherishing our, our, our you know, culture and what we are known for, our quirky little things and manners. Obviously before Alan Wake you had Max Payne, which was quirky and strange, but I would say Alan Wake kind of took those qualities and ramped them up to 11. And it's very rare to see a game that is equal parts horror, humor, and strangeness. Al, please tell me we're headed for the nearest. You're now leaving Bright Falls. Come back soon sign. It was very, very important to me to come up with a hero character who is not a professional hero. Him being a writer allowed me to explore the idea of creative process and writing process as part of the plot, which keeps on being an element, of course, in, in Alan Wake 2 as well. I think it's kind of common knowledge that we took a lot of inspiration from Twin Peaks and there was nothing quite like that at the time. We tried to, in that game, integrate the story into the gameplay more, so with the manuscript pages the player found, kind of try and find novel ways to kind of tell the story. These projects are huge endeavors and many, many things, many of them out of, totally out of your control, need to click into place for a big game to happen. There is an element of luck. The same very cool concept at certain point in time might not get any interest or excitement around it. Suddenly, everybody wants it. Fuse box is missing a fuse. Horror as a genre in pop culture overall has been growing in popularity a lot. And I think that that was the missing puzzle piece in creating a concept of Alan Wake 2 where everything just suddenly clicked into place and was very exciting. In the build-up to the Game Awards, announcing Alan Wake 2 was huge for us. It was huge for the team because this is an idea that has lived in Sam's brain for 13 years. And now we finally get to present at least a sliver of it to the world. This is so exciting, Alan Wake 2. It's been a decade fans have been asking you for it. Why is now the right time to bring him back? We knew this is going to be a pretty scary experience. I was but say now we are convinced everybody is ready. What? You are ready. We showcased a, a demo of the game when we were at the Summer Games Fest. We chose a mission which takes place on Saga's side and it showcases the Pacific Northwest. She's investigating, there's a lot of supernatural weirdness. For fans of the franchise, it's a return to Cauldron Lake, an old friend, and it's got Casey in it. <laughs> Remedy's really found its niche. We know our strengths, we know what we are good at. We know that that is world building, that is atmosphere, and we keep building on these strengths and we keep investing into all other areas and seeing how can we do more, how can we go bigger, how can we go bolder. It's a story that you're not told, it's a story that you play. And the team has done a lot of really great work in coming up with unique and interesting ways to make that experience playable. Between every game project, that we have made, we have done a new concept of Alan Wake 2. It's been frustrating through the years not being able to 
get it started and be excited about it, and then it's not happening. I think that the game we are now making is by far the most exciting, the most interesting and ambitious one out of all of those concepts. And I'm really, really happy that it's this Alan Wake 2 that we are making and none of the earlier ones. The saga experience that takes place in the Pacific Northwest is only one part of this experience. The other side is us returning to play as Alan Wake and revisiting a location not only from his past, but also from Remedy's past. At the end of the first game, uh, Alan Wake dove into Cauldron Lake and ended up in the nightmare dimension underneath the lake or connected to the lake. There is a whole world there waiting and he's been stuck there ever since. It's a nightmare reality based on the person's subconscious. For Alan Wake himself, he's gone back to a place from his past. New York, this fictional version of New York has a certain magic to it. It's this archetype of a big city. To me, that feels like the right place. He is a writer from New York City. A lot of his books were these gritty, noir, grimy version of New York City. And so we're starting to see this almost replica of his own internal image of New York start to build itself around him. There's a lot of history that's happened there from a narrative experience related to his wife, Alice. There will be characters that turn up in New York that kind of are connected to some of those books that he wrote as well. The New York we refer to is an echo of the hard-boiled crime noir city present in the Alex Casey book, which is the novel written by Alan Wake. Another place to use in this story. We only used the very old school graffiti from the 70s and the 80s, and we kind of came up with our own version of it, which has a bit of a twist of like horror and nightmare. So we created something that we call nightmare graffiti. If you pay attention to details, even the smallest sign has something to say to you. And we want to create the feeling that the, the dark place is talking to Alan and the player. It's sort of a surreal, ever-changing, ever-modulating dreamscape. We want to make the player feel uneasy at all times. He has learned a lot. So we come back to him, and in some ways, he is the master of the supernatural now. Is he better off because of that? No, quite the contrary. And that to me also is a big part of the horror of it. Like he's really, really lost and really, really struggling. For him, it could be one or a thousand years. He is just in this room with a typewriter and that's his world at this point. He's just writing and writing and writing and working through a way out, like trying to find an escape through the only tool that he has, which is writing. Saga is fighting for life while Alan is fighting for his own sanity. It's really about like paranoia, confusion. Will you take the risk of revealing the shadow, even if there is a monster hidden behind? In the Pacific Northwest, playing a Saga, I feel there's more of an ebb and flow or at least it will feel that way to the player, they'd come back to Saga as a part of the game and feel maybe a little bit of relief. Not to say that the Pacific Northwest doesn't have its own dangers, because we definitely do. To me, Il Cavilli, the physical actor of Alan Wake, and Matthew Porreda, the, the, the voice actor of Alan Wake, that is who Alan Wake is. There was never any question of Alan Wake being portrayed by anyone else. This is how, how it works. Ilka will paint a picture, and then he'll send it to me, and then I'll, I'll paint, the, paint a little bit on the picture, and then I send it back to him. There's this kind of collaboration that we do, and it's very rare that you see us in the same place together. It's singular, and it's, it's ours. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember it. When we were making Alan Wake 1, we always used to say that he's terrified but cool. I don't think that a lot of the coolness is, is left. He's in deep trouble. There's no escape. You will never escape. You will drown here. You are stuck in a loop. You don't have a clue. You are lost. There's a humanity to him that you're going to see in this game that you didn't get in the first game. There's a depth. We have a great show for you here tonight. Hi, my name is David Harewood, and I'm playing a character called Wallindor in Alan Wake. Duh. 
This is my talk show. In between with Wall and Door. Alan Wake is here. Alan Wake, one of my all-time favorite writers and guests on the show. He seems fairly affable and friendly and fun. But as the story develops, I think you get an idea that Dor is not quite the person who he seems to be. As an actor and a gamer, it's just really cool to be not just in a video game, but to be in a video game made by who I think are probably some of the best video makers. Their storytelling is fantastic and some of it's really dark. As a writer, you're always thinking, well, my stuff isn't good enough. Is this, you know, gonna actually work? And I think Alan is getting that feedback in a much more tangible and consequential way. It's interesting taking your own profession and applying it as a threat to a character. <laughs> I, I know you from somewhere. You just forgotten again. We're in it together. Don't worry. We have been working hard to make sure that Alan Wake 2 is a very satisfying continuation to Alan Wake's journey. It is not the story that you would expect, but in my opinion, it is the better for it, and you will be surprised, and I hope pleasantly.